Have you ever wondered what type of developers that you want to become, either front-end, back-end, full-stack? Well, today we are going to be focusing on how do you become a Python back-end developer. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky Mei and I am a full-time software engineer living in New York City. In this channel, you are going to learn a lot of things about web development, how to learn to code, and all things related to tech. So the first part that I want to talk about is who is a backend developer and what does a backend developer do? Mostly backend developers are manipulating data as well as creating and making API endpoints for front-end developers. So if you're thinking about a full-stack application, a lot of times front-end developers are the developers who are taking the user's requests and gathering those information and creating requests to send over to the backend developers and engineers. So for backend engineers, they are responsible for managing the database, developing the APIs, as well as optimizing code to make the application work effectively. So now step number two is to actually pick a language. There are so many options out there. Obviously, JavaScript is a very popular backend language that most of the front-end developers use because it's just easier to build a full stack application with just one programming language. So you don't have to worry about switching different programming languages back and forth. So the most popular backend language for JavaScript is Node.js and you would probably hear a lot about the frameworks such as Express. If you wanted to focus on backend, it's important to pick a backend language. I think that Python is a great choice. You will start to realizing that Python is really easy to read. If you have have a computer science background either in C or Java, Python is completely different. It's very easy to read. It's almost like human readable syntax for beginners to learn. So when you first learn Python, it's really easy to grasp those object-oriented programming languages, paradigms and concepts, and it's very enjoyable to learn Python as a beginner. Now, when you started to getting more complicated and learning more things in Python, one of the top recommendations for me is Angela use 100 days of Python courses. Um, her course is great because it contains not only for web development projects, but as well as data manipulation projects. So you get so much things and project ideas out of this course and I would definitely highly recommend to purchase her course if you are running out of ideas to build to practice Python. Another thing that is really important when you're learning Python is to consider thinking about things that you can automate. And one of the easiest and more transitionable way for you to do that is actually looking at your current job. What are some of the repetitive tasks that you have to do manually? Is there a way for you to actually create an automated tool to help your job? If you have ideas like that and you're creating tools to help you and also your team to improve efficiency, that's worth mentioning on your resume when you're looking for jobs, especially as a back-end developer. Definitely look through different projects that you can build with Python before even considering thinking about jumping into frameworks. So step number three is actually to pick a framework. When you're getting familiar with learning the fundamentals on Python, now it's definitely the time for you to really consider picking a framework. So the most popular web development related framework framework for Python is Django. And Django is highly flexible with built-in features that are very easy to use. Um, it comes with tools and libraries that is out of the box instead of relying on other libraries. Django is mostly used for mid-range projects and also web applications. And I've definitely seen a lot of startups or even larger companies are using Python for their backend. I also notice that a lot of companies that is data related are usually using Python as their backend just because Python is easier to work with data manipulations and also as well as gathering statistics and data to create more reports and also surfing um, business to make a decision. Now, another options for framework is Flask 
Flaxed is a micro web framework is mostly used for solutions that are mainly prefer less performance. And I think that is definitely a great start to learn when you're considering picking a framework for web development. So either picking Flaxed or Django, it doesn't really matter that much. I think that both are really great frameworks to learn. I also think that if you can just pick one and focusing on one, it'll help you a lot because when you are actually working as a developer, the chances of you learning both of those frameworks are very, very high. Step number four, which is probably one of the most crucial steps comparing to front-end developer, is to learn about database. So for front-end developers, you'll still need to know about full-stack development and you'll still need to know some database to some extent. But for a backend developer, it's really important to understand database and why and how to choose the database for your application. Database are where you storing your information. There are usually two types of database that are exist. One is called SQL and the other one is called NoSQL. And the most common database for Python is usually PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQLite, or Oracle. Honestly, just pick one and learn it because they're all very simple. Similar. It's just a little bit different with the syntax. Personally, I like PostgreSQL because a lot of companies are using that, but honestly, they're very similar. So don't even worry too much about picking which one that you want to learn. If you're considering becoming a backend developer, I think it's important to learn SQL versus NoSQL. I would encourage to learn both, but I think that it's necessary. And I think it's also my recommendation to learn SQL instead of NoSQL. But again, eventually in your career, you're just gonna learn both of them, just like me. But for now, when you're learning, just for the sake of learning and building a project and putting yourself out there to become a developer, it's just pick one. Eventually, you're gonna learn both of them anyways. So step number five, the last but not the least, it's important to have a good understanding on data structures and algorithm. That being said, it's mainly about computer science knowledge. It's just good to know all these things as a developer, whether you're a front-end developer, back-end developer, full-stack developer, mobile developers. But I think it's extremely important for back-end developers to really understand data structures and algorithm and being able to really think about building large-scale applications because back-end developers a lot of times is working on improved efficiency and also thinking about cloud experiences and overall maintenance and testing your server. Good thing to think about when it comes to building up your resume and your experience as a backend developer. So another thing that I forgot to mention or maybe I mentioned earlier is the idea of just basic developer tools. So thinking about like Git version controls is important and also just like understanding how to host your projects on GitHub and also use GitHub to collaborate with different developers are also super important developer skills that you should really be considering learning. What is the bottom line here? The bottom line is you can can do it. I believe in you and you can definitely become a backend developer if you're following all these following steps that I mentioned previously. And I am going to give you all the resources and recommendations personally from me down in the description down below and make sure to check out those resources. And again, I am not sponsored by any of these courses or these organizations. Everything is from me and from my personal recommendation. So make sure to check those resources out and I hope that I really do help you at least get you started. If you are considering or kind of debating on whether or not you should learn Java or Python and you're kind of debating on that, um, I actually have a video that is right here that basically comparing Java versus Python. It'll help you out a lot to pick and choose. Make sure to subscribe, share this video with someone else, and until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Please stay safe and adios.